So how are you doing, man? Very sick to have you. Yeah, good. I'm great. It's good to be on here. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good, man. I'm very good. That hoodie that you've got on right now is so sick. I'm, I'm, Thank I'm gonna have to. I'm definitely gonna gonna have to get that, man. Um, yeah, the, this is my first time ever getting things uh, cut and sew, custom made, overseas. Uh -huh. So this is this is just the sample, but it's a full zip. Yeah, it's really good. I'm just trying to save up right now to buy them because I've got to put in like a massive order of like a hundred. So just to start off quickly, how's lockdown been for you, clothing wise? It's been a bit. I mean, it's hard for everyone, but it's it's come with its benefits and you know problems with it. Beginning when it started, I didn't really think it would. I didn't really know what it was going to be like. And um, I moved everything back to my house, to the screen print, not here. And it was so hard because I was in my bedroom. I was trying to do like a hundred orders and I print them all by hand, going to the post office, like all the orders, like my supply wasn't coming. And that's been a bit terrible, but I tried to make the best of the situation with um, me and Bracken. We made a coloring book together because I just figured I couldn't really make a big collection then so we made a coloring book just for like a fiver just so people like to do something at home it was really boring and we gave all the money to the um nhs charities together and that was pretty fun i made like raised over 300 pounds for them so that was fun and it was just cool to have a coloring book to give to people and yeah, that's pretty good and since then i mean it's just kind of been hard getting like the stock and supply but I'm so blessed I'm in the, the studio right now where I'm at and because it's just me here, it means I can come down here whenever I want and just work all night. It, it doesn't matter because it's a lockdown, I just come here. So I'm kind of blessed that I have this place and that's kind of saved me, to be honest. And are you based in London? No, I'm in Winchester, which is like okay. an hour away from London. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, before I was just doing all the stuff out of my bedroom and in my house and I did that for about three or four years and it just got so big my mum would come home and the whole like sitting room the whole kitchen would just be covered in screen printing like hoodies and stuff drying and I couldn't work there anymore so right now I'm in Winchester and I'm uh I'm in the studio which is my friend Nissen's and Carlina they're really nice they've um Basically, it's this massive abandoned building. It used to be like a social club, like a pub type of thing. It's absolutely massive. There's like nine bedrooms or just loads of massive rooms yeah. here. And the whole thing's abandoned. And it's kind of like, it's all a bit crazy. But basically what I've done since March is I've moved in. I've taken over the whole basement and I've got like a bed over there. I sleep down here. Um, a, I got a room next door that I converted and I turned into a photo studio. And in this room is where I screen print all the stuff. Back there, you can see all my inks and I just work out of this room and yeah, it's really good. That's really sick, man. Yeah, it's cool. awesome. So how's, how's the creative life changed between being um, bef beforehand uh, and being in the studio? It was difficult because I was just in my small house with my family and I've, I've got like my little sister, my parents there. So I can't really, I would have to work once they were all in bed, like from, I'd be working from 10 p.m. until 4 a.m. So I had the whole downstairs free and it was just so tiring. I had to be really quiet because they're upstairs. It's really hard to be quiet in screen printing and my cat would come in. He would, sometimes he would walk over the t-shirts, like get ink on his paws. And that's, oh, like, really? <laughs> yeah, I've got a bunch of t-shirts with my cat, cat's paw prints on. That it's could be cool. quite cold though. Yeah, that, that could be a little special edition one. But yeah, since I've come here, I mean, the sky's the limit. Here I've got to work around a lot of things, but it's kind of forced me to be more creative. Like here, I don't have running water. So in the corner I have, hundreds of water bottles that I fill up and I come down here because I just have to like pour them out to clean my screens. Uh, there's no Wi-Fi here. My phone's outside in the garden hotspotting me. Um, yeah, just got to be creative and it's, it's good. Like it's a massive space. It's just whatever I want to do. If I 
try my hardest, I'll find a way and I can do it here. And it's just, it's amazing. I'm really lucky to have this place. And so just to start from the beginning, um, what initially drew you to fashion and clothes? So it was, it was probably four, four, five years or four years ago. I was in secondary school and I used, I got into skateboarding and I'd go down to like my local skate park all the time. And all the older kids would be wearing really cool clothes like Supreme and Palace back then. And I really liked it, but I was in year nine or something. And my parents didn't give me any money to like, they wouldn't buy clothes for me like that. So I got a job and I saved up about 75 pounds and I bought a screen printing starter kit on Amazon. And with YouTube videos, I just taught myself how to print t-shirts. And originally I was actually, um, I actually made fake box logos and um, Palace t-shirts. Oh really? Yeah, because I couldn't afford them. My parents weren't buying them for me. So I just bought the kit. I made them myself and that was pretty fun for a while. And then I thought, you know, it's fun to a point, but you're just copying, you're just making fake t-shirts. It's not very fulfilling. So that's when I created Sabai. And since then I've just been moving on and on. And yeah, I just, it's all, it's my mind all the time. I'm always thinking about it. I'm always wanting to try things. And yeah, it's just, I finance it all myself and I deal with the production, the marketing, pretty much everything I just, I have my foot in, so it's quite hard for me, but I've got so many designs, so many ideas. It's just over time, it's just been money trying to work that out to actually make things. And that's just, it's just, but gradually, probably from last year, things have just started to explode. It started to grow so much. Was there a it's defining just, point for you when you realised how big it was, it, where you kind of realised, wow, this is big? Yeah, probably two times. Um, the first time was when I was in college. It was my first year of college and I was doing an extended project. And um, I used that as an excuse to get the day off college. And there's a skate shop just probably about two minutes down the road from my college and uh, Beans and Boards. And they're really nice guys there. And the owner of the store, Jack, he let me have a pop-up there for one day. So I took over the whole shop and I just had my clothes up there. And I had people like lining outside. Um, yeah, it was just really good. It's just crazy to see. That was probably the first moment where I realized, wow, because I'm quite a quiet person. I kind of just do things. I'm just posting out the orders. I'm not trying to, I'm not really in everyone's face about it. And in Winchester, it's not like London. You don't really see many people. So that was really cool seeing everyone there. And it was probably three months ago. Did they initially I, know the brand or did they come because of seeing the pieces for the first time? Ooh, I don't know, it's hard. A lot of people know Sabai and they don't know me. And I, I'll go around college and I'll see people wearing the clothes I don't even know. And really? yeah, so cool. I went back. How do you feel when that happens and what do you do? Oh, I'm just, I just get really, maybe I'll go up to them and say nice hoodie or something and say thank you or something, but I'm really shy. I just, I, it just makes my day and I just walk off. It's really cool. That's really humble of you, man. That's really humble. Like, oh, if that was me, I would go up to them and be like, you know you're wearing my fucking hoodie. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I respect that. I respect that. I respect the humility a lot, man. So do you, do you, not, do you say to them, you know, that's that I'm, I made it. I made that. Sometimes. It's quite cool with some things. Like, the hoodie you're wearing right now, every single one of those hoodies I screen printed, like, with my two hands, so anytime I see anyone wearing them, if I'm tagged in a picture in person, I don't know them. It's just really cool to me to think that, wow, at one point in time, I made that. And it's just, that's, that's the most crazy thing to me. And I don't know, sometimes I go up to them, but I'm quite a shy guy. So not all the time, but there's a really good time. I was at Spoons once and I was out the front and a guy, I was wearing a Sabai hoodie and a guy came up to me, he's really drunk and he's like, oh, I, really, I, I know that brand. My friend, my friend like works with that, the guy that owns it and i was like oh yeah does he and i was like oh it's my brand and he just didn't couldn't believe it it was just funny how he knew the hoodie but he didn't know me so he was saying oh like my friend was working with the guy who made it and that was yeah you. yeah and i was like oh really who's that 
<laughs> stuff like that's just cool to me. That's yeah. fucking golden, man. That's the best. That's why I do it. It's just cool to think that all across the world, they're just people that wearing stuff I made. And it's, I don't know, it's just really cool. That's the best part. Mm, yeah, exactly. No, that must be super satisfying, man. Oh, yeah, it's the best. Like, I don't really do this for the money. Like, if I did this for the money, I would have quit. I've gone broke from this like seven times. I've had to sell loads of my own clothes. The most satisfying thing is just seeing people wearing it and enjoying it. It's just, that's just the coolest thing to me that someone really likes something I've made and they've bought it and they're just wearing it. That's just the best. Yeah, like I noticed when we first started the interview, you were kind of like, oh, I like that hoodie. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. As if you like, but you fucking made that hoodie, man. So big respect, big respect. Yeah, really it's, it. it's like um, my baby. I just, it's, I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. It's just, great to see it yeah and what's your favorite piece that you've made so far that's a hard one i've got some samples that are coming soon are you allowed to give us a sneak peek i can give you a sneak peek i've got one that um i mean apart from this let me find uh this t-shirt hasn't got any graphics on it yet but this one's going to be crazy when I release this. Yeah. I've got, this is like, a, I've got inspiration from a bait hoodie I have. Uh, yeah, that will be sick. Man, I don't know. Every time I make a design, I just make things I like. So every time I make something like, oh, that's my new favorite. I don't know. It's, yeah, there's so many. I, I love them all. Yeah. It's hard to tell, to be honest. Although the one you're wearing, I that's not my favorite. I'm kind of, I've printed it so many times. I'm so bored of it now. Yeah. But that's, the, that's the most popular one. So I've got to do it to keep making money to fund other things. But mm. maybe the one of the girl eating the logo and all the stuff I've done with Bracken's amazing. She's amazing with her drawings. Yeah. Where are you looking to take it in the future? I'm not sure. I'm just kind of, I'm never going to stock it in any shops. I'm, I'm just going to keep doing it on my own website. I want to... I've got so many designs. To me, it's, the future is kind of just doing as much as I can to save money, to put back into it, to make the more expensive things, just scale it up. And I just want the stuff to be selling out on the night and then go on to the next thing. And I just, my main goal with it is just to keep making the things that I want to wear and working with lots of other cool people and putting them on, giving them more like people to look at their work and just helping other people that's what the main thing's about i don't know one day i'd like to own my own shop or something but i'm just taking how it goes mm. and it's really really uh inspiring man i really like the way that you perceive things because you're very humble and usually i interview rappers i i feel like the the kind of drive and working hard and is 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 a simultaneous theme you know what i mean so i really respect that when i see that i'm just trying to i'm just trying to put my foot in everything i i, I just want to help young people like myself who who just individual independent i want like i work with so many people i want to help them out and it, it goes both ways like um I work with Bracken, who does loads of my designs. Um, and she does all like the cool illustrations and drawings. And I want her art, I, I love her art. Before I even, I was following her for about a year before I even messaged her with anything to do with I'm just a fan of her art. And I really believe in it. That's and crazy. I think she could be like, like the next basket out of something. I, I want to just, Putting it on the t-shirts and giving her money helps her fund what she's doing and it gives more people seeing it. And all the people I work with, I'm either friends with or I just really respect. I don't yeah. I don't work with anyone just for clout or money. Mm. I'll only help people out who I think it just it just works with. Money comes after, it's just about helping people and Yeah, and and clout comes after. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like I've I've never bought Instagram adverts. I'm never gonna do anything like that. Um, I don't really push it my clothes too much. I, it's kind of just 
if you come across it on Instagram and you like the designs, then you'll like it. I just, I try to focus on the actual work and I think that would bring people to it instead of doing all this other, selling it to influencers and stuff like that. Oh, this is the second time I realized that the brand's gone big. I sent a hoodie to my friend, um, Louis Partridge, and he is, when I sent the hoodie to him, he had about 4 million followers. And then just randomly one day, I just sent him the hoodies just, you know, cause I've been talking to him since about, I went back as about 2017. Um, and then one day I was just in my bed and then I saw a picture on Instagram I was tagged in and it was his post, it was his post, just like a mirror selfie wearing the hoodie you're wearing saying like, thanks for 5 million followers. And I was just stunned that he posted the picture and tagged me in it. So I just sent him this hoodie for free because I just, he just, he's always liked it. So I sent him one. And then since then my followers have doubled. I've got, had so many orders because of it and it just started to pop off. And every day since then, it's just kept growing. And that was, that was a big turning point. Mm, crazy man. And I guess things like that happen as long as you're working hard at, at doing your thing. You know what I mean? You create yeah, exactly. luck. And I guess the best way to do it is the most organic way. Yeah, word, word of mouth, you can't beat it. Like, also on my clothes, the hoodie you're wearing is such, in my opinion, it's really good quality. And I sell yeah. that for about 50 pounds. I sell, I know people who sell those hoodies for a hundred and you get people selling Gildan hoodies for so much money. And I'd rather, you know, make my profit margin smaller and then send it to someone and they can't believe how good it feels and they can't believe the quality. So then they'll come back and they'll keep buying things. I think that's much better than just quick cash. Exactly. Yeah, completely agreed, man. And finally, what does uh, Sabai represent? I know it's quite a formulaic question, but I, yeah. I, I, I just, I'm interested. No, that's a good one. So basically, when I started, um, I'm half Thai. I was born in Thailand, my dad's Thai, and then I moved back, moved back to England. And Sabai is a Thai word, and there's no direct translation to English, but it means comfortable, relaxed. And if, if you like, people ask how you do, and you say Sabai, Sabai, that means you're good, you know. You're, you're uh -huh. comfortable. Interesting. Yeah, and to me, it kind of, because there's no direct translation, it kind of, it, it's kind of an open meaning. It To me, it just means to try to be self-aware um confident uh happy with this it, it's try to you've got to try to be happy with yourself then you can understand the world around you and you can be a better person i think there's so many brands where it's fuck the world fuck everyone else and that's the whole thing and that's cool but if you're just like that if you can be quite ignorant and kind of alienate yourself from people so i think it's better to try be self-aware and comfortable with yourself then you can live a better life and yeah every day yeah. it's just trying to be more at one well it's interesting well yeah yeah yeah. that's very interesting it's interesting that you talk about how every brand is kind of fuck the world because i've definitely noticed that uh there's definitely a massive revival of uh emo inspired stuff you know what i mean i was looking through these brands from the uk they're all like misery paranoia um, I love Detached as a brand, but Detached, like, you know what I mean? It's, it, there's a whole lot of... Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's cool for like that. Like, there are lots of brands where they'll do edgy stuff like that, and nothing's wrong with that. Like, I, I do stuff like that sometimes, but I find a lot of brands, their selling point is just being edgy, and yeah. you're trying to be cliche, cool. And I'd, I'm not trying to... I'm not, I'm, me myself, I'm not a really cool, you know, like one of them guys. I just want to be happy with myself. So that's what it's about. Just trying to, just knowing where you stand and you can do anything you want, but yeah, I don't know. It's just being comfortable and just trying. Yeah. Oh, I'll shout a couple of people out because Sabai, Sabai is, you know, I, I oversee everything, but 
me and myself, it survives not just me. I've got so many people that help me out, so many amazing friends. Like I said, I have Bracken who does all of the amazing drawings. She's such a big part of this. I wouldn't be where I am without her. I have my girlfriend, Amaya. Um, I've been with her for almost a year. She's helped me out so much. She's, because of the lockdown, she's like my right hand man. She does so much. She's made the whole website for me. She's done crazy amounts of work. I have my friends like Toby, Molly, CJ, Ollie, just so many great people around here that just help me out and I wouldn't be possible without them. So I kind of think of myself as more of a director and I just sit in the back directing things, but Sabai is just so many people. It's, yeah, I can't take all the credit for it. <laughs>